What do all great cities have in common? Is it the size of the population, the number of skyscrapers, or perhaps the city's popularity as a tourist destination? The truth is that a city can only be great if it had a great plan to begin with. According to Malaysian architect Lawrence Law, all great cities have great plans. But in the case of Kuala Lumpur, it has never been implemented. This resulted in a city plagued with numerous issues which could have been avoided with proper urban planning. This is a sight and sound that the people of Kuala Lumpur are all too familiar with. Especially on weekdays, being stuck behind the wheel is something that is a given in KL. Unfortunately, congestion is something that the people have come to accept as a normal everyday occurrence. But why? This is because KL is a city of cars. It is a car manufacturer's paradise here. Everything is built around cars. Massive highways are built for cars to speed. Trees along the road are cut so that drivers can see more clearly. Instead of zebra crossings, there are overhead pedestrian bridges, just so that cars don't have to slow down. Even residential buildings are built around cars. The first thing you see on a condominium are not the residential lots, but the massive multi-storey car parks beneath them. The reality of the development of Kuala Lumpur is that it has been dictated by road systems and the needs of vehicles. As American Indian architect Professor Christopher Charles Benninger put it, the city's layout is connected by massive roadways leading from one giant development to the next. We have become slaves to the automobile. The scale of the city is now the scale of the automobile instead of the human scale. As a result of KL's urban planning being revolved around cars, the people suffer for it. There is an evident lack of human-centric design. One glaring example of this can be seen in many parts of Greater KL. Local journalist Jafwan Jaffa put it nicely in a New Straits Times article titled Taking the Side of Sidewalks. The basic pedestrian facility known as the sidewalk or pavement in its truest form does not exist in Malaysia. Though they are commonplace and taken for granted in civilized nations, in our country, sidewalks are but a WhatsApp spread viral rumor. The unfortunate truth is that although it sounds like a joke, Jaffa is completely serious. There are literally no sidewalks in some parts of KL. Take this street in SS15 for instance, there's no sidewalk. What about the other side of the road? There's no sidewalk either. And no, this part doesn't count because it's private property. The fact that this street does not have any sidewalks is alarming because it is one of the most used streets in SS15, or maybe even the entirety of Subang Jaya. Taylor's College and Inti College are both located on it, meaning that hundreds if not thousands of students walk on it every day, yet there isn't complete sidewalk coverage. The lack of sidewalks is but one glaring issue of KL's urban planning, however. Ironically, despite the great focus on cars of the urban development of KL, there are still serious issues related to vehicular infrastructure. For one, parking is and always has been a monumental issue in Kuala Lumpur. In certain parts of the city, parking can seem impossible due to the lack of parking space or exorbitant prices. This explains the widespread phenomenon of double parking, and sometimes even triple parking. One of the consequences of this relates to the previously mentioned lack of sidewalks. When drivers double park, it leaves very little space on the road for not only other road users, but pedestrians as well. Whenever there are double parked cars and there are no sidewalks, pedestrians will be displaced onto the road, where they will be forced to walk between cars, which is as dangerous as it is unpleasant. Double parking is so serious that Petronas even came up with an app that was supposed to help frustrated victims of it better deal with the issue. Leather bound in my feathered hand To make you understand To make you understand That it's just for now
Sadly, the novel idea never took off as most people have never even heard of the app. Regardless, the point is that parking in the city is incredibly difficult to find at times, so much so that some selfish drivers turn to double parking. However, not all drivers have such bad attitudes of course, as many people turn to other, more civilized solutions to beat the issue of lack of parking, such as public transport. In a 2015 survey, the Malaysian Land Public Transport Commission, also known as SPAD, found that out of 1,412 public transport users, at 50% of the total, the top reason for using public transport is because of the lack of personal private transport. This is followed by 42% of users who choose to use public transport because they would rather not deal with the parking problem. The key here though is that top reason. The implication of it is that if those people had cars, they would choose to not use public transport and use their own cars instead. But what is wrong with the public transport of Kuala Lumpur? Kuala Lumpur comprises of many parts, not all of which are connected by public transport. Although the MRT line has been introduced, there are still many places that are inaccessible without a private vehicle. Transit in a city needs to be looked at more seriously. In New York, for example, parking spaces are very limited and very expensive. But to compensate, there are 450 rail stops that allow people to travel anywhere in Manhattan and Brooklyn. Above ground, there are bus services connecting these places even deeper into the urban fabric. For now, Malaysian public transportation is not exactly up to par to world-class cities like New York or Tokyo. According to the previously mentioned 2015 SPART survey, there are a variety of reasons why non-public transport users choose to use other methods of travel, among them being infrequent service, lack of stations near destinations, poor service punctuality, and so on. There is definitely room for improvement here in KL. But now, it is time to get to the root of the problem. Why are cars so deeply intertwined with Kuala Lumpur's urban development? What is the root cause of KL's seemingly perpetual congestion? The answer can be found in something that has been shown before in this film. Remember the American Indian architect's quote? It went something like this. As American Indian architect Professor Christopher Charles Benninger put it, the city's layout is connected by massive roadways leading from one giant development to the next. So why are there so many cars? It's because of this phenomenon. Urban sprawl. Over a period of 20 years, the KL metropolitan region witnessed a higher rate of increase in its physical area than that of its population. In that time, the population roughly doubled, but the area increased by two and a half times. That is urban sprawl. In a process also called suburbanization, urban sprawl describes the expansion of human populations away from central urban areas into low-density and usually car-dependent communities. Urban sprawl is characterized by the inefficient use of land resources, which will lead to sprawl, the horizontal expansion of a city. This can be seen when comparing two cities, Atlanta, the capital of the US state of Georgia, and Barcelona, the capital of Catalan in Spain. Almost the same amount of people live in each city, but the built-up area of Atlanta is about 26 times that of Barcelona. This is a prime example of sprawl versus compact development. Urban sprawl leads to lengthier commutes and high energy consumption for commuting. It makes public transport financially unfeasible, which results in an enormous increase in private car ownership. This leads to traffic congestion and increased pollution due to greater vehicular emissions. Hence, limiting urban sprawl is key to increasing the sustainability of a city. Fortunately, the blight of urban sprawl is widely recognized as a serious issue by the professionals and academics who are charged with urban development in Malaysia. They seem enthusiastic in its embrace of the goal of making Kuala Lumpur a world-class city. In that spirit, Greater KL has been selected as one of the 12 national key economic areas. However, there is a pressing need to enhance coordination between federal, state and local planning authorities to ensure the effective implementation of policies at the local level. But if the above mentioned strategies are implemented successfully, Malaysia will be kept on its chosen path. Malaysia will be elevated to its rightful place among the developed nations, helping Kuala Lumpur evolve into a world-class city and paving the path for other compact and sustainable Malaysian cities.